Hello, it's Brennan Falk, and today I'm going to be going over the EESDB, which is the Electrical Engineers Database. Essentially, this database is designed for electrical engineers to be able to enter in all of their components and catalog, catalog them online. So, I thought this would be really useful for people who have thousands of components laying around, and they need to know what they have on hand so they can, you know, buy stuff online or whatnot. So, you know, originally I was thinking I was just going to have a little Unix script in a raw database, and then you could look through it on your personal computer, but then I thought of all the benefits of having it online, like being able to share it with friends, and also being able to access it from other places. So, say you're out for the weekend, and you come up with a brilliant idea that you want to make something during the week, and you don't know if you have the components on hand, you can simply steal your friend's laptop and go online, and then you can see what exactly you have, and then you can see what you want to order. So, here's what I have so far. I have the domain eesdb.org. It is currently under secured HTTP. That's mostly for the login, register, and stuff, but, you know, I just put it on every site because I, I don't see an issue with having secure websites. So, it's currently self-signed. There is no certificate for it, so you're going to get the little warning, but you can ignore that, or, you know, if you don't trust me, then don't ignore it, but whatever. So here's just basically the home page. I have a mission statement here of what I want the website to become, and then some more goals that are in a list format here. So ability to enter and save component lists, creating component playlists, being able to perform lookups for components by keyword, parametric searches, calculations based on lists, and sharing with friends. Then I have a contact page, which has my name, my email, stuff like that. A login page where you enter your username, your password, and a login button. And a registration page where you enter in username, password, email, and then a CAPTCHA for spam reasons. So, I'm going to go ahead and make a new account here. So, let's just make a quick account. So, we'll call it test and stuff like that. And enter in a legit email because we're going to need to register. Um, here's just the simple... Uh, uh, limits to the username. It has to be uh, a letter that's lowercase or uppercase, a number, and it can't be greater than 32 characters. The password has no limitations as it is hashed on the user side, so whatever you want to enter in, it's hashed anyways, so it doesn't matter, and then that's sent over to the server or it's salted and hashed again. So here's where I have everything, so we're gonna go in and uh, S. And now it says an email has been dispatched to us. So we're just going to go ahead and try and break it. So we're going to go in and test and test. As you can see, it says you are not registered. Please check your email and click the link to register. Okay, let's do that. So we got a new email while we were recording this. But, um... Oh, come on, email. Don't be slow when I'm trying to make a video. Dun, dun, dun. Connected. Uh-oh. This could be an issue here. If I can't get my email, then how am I going to possibly make this video? Well, we'll wait for a couple more seconds here for this to go through. Hmm? What are the odds of that? Well, let's close out the email. Maybe it's a Thunderbird issue. Go back in to Thunderbird. There we go. Sorry about that. But here's the email. ESDB registration from ESDB registration. No reply at ESDB.org. Um, please click the link below to register. There's the link. Click. Boom. Brings you back to the registration page and says you have successfully registered. Now we can go ahead and log in. Test. And... Here we go. Here's the main guts and glory of the website. So we have add a component where model and miscellaneous are optional. But here's what we have so far. You can enter in the type of component. We currently only have resistor, capacitor, and inductor. Obviously more is going to come later. Model, which is completely random garbage that you want to enter in. And same with miscellaneous. But I wanted to keep them separate for um, sorting purposes. Um, 
then down here we have search your database where you can search your database so you can filter out by component type you can sort by value or type um, I'll implement sorting by model number and miscellaneous that will take two seconds I don't know why I haven't done it yet you can also um, do a parametric search based on the values where you have uh, a lower bound and an upper bound you also have a wildcard search on a model and a wildcard search on miscellaneous so let's go in and add some dummy values. Let's add the traditional 100 ohm, 5% tolerance resistor. And there we go, added components. So we can go through and search through everything, and there it is. 100, 100 ohms, 5% tolerance. I don't show the ohm symbol here, but that's prettiness, and that can come later. Um, I'll add a 1K ohm resistor. And we'll say this one's 10% tolerance. And now we can search again, and you can see we have the 100 ohm and the 1k ohm. Let's add a capacitor. Typical 4.7 microfarad capacitor. And we're going to say this is ceramic, which really makes no sense, but whatever. First thing that popped into my head. Inductor, we can say, uh, let's say, 50. 50 micro henny, and we're going to say this is tiny inductor or something like that. Um, we'll also go in, add another resistor. We're going to call this one uh, 1 mega ohm, and we're going to give this a model number. We'll call this the 5321A, and we'll call this 0.01% tolerance. I don't know, something to enter in. But we can go in and look at everything here now, and we have the capacitor, the 4.7 micro, we have the 50 micro inductor, we have the 100 resistor, the 1K resistor, the 1 meg resistor, the model number, and then all the miscellaneous entries. So we can go ahead and let's start filtering. First of all, just resistors. There we go, the 100, the 1K, the 1 meg. Capacitors just have the one capacitor and inductors. We have the one inductor. Now we can go back to search all three, and now we can change this to descending order. So, there you go, now you have it in reverse order. Let's also go in and we'll enter in something that's greater than one meg that only uses one K. So let's enter in 10,000 kilo ohms for resistor, and we'll go in and there it is, it's beyond the 1 meg. So it isn't just based off of that, it actually converts the meg into the SI prefix and then multiplies that by the pref er, by the number, and that way it can do a proper sort. So here's a very simple database so far. We're going to enter in some random garbage here, just, just for fun, and then we can... just so we can filter more out later. Um, so, just random, random garbage here. But, here's what we have. Now we can go in and say we want to figure out which resistors and capacitors, for for some reason, why you would want to search like that, between 4.7 micros and 1 kilo ohm. Or kilo, because we're using capacitors and resistors. So this should hopefully limit, first of all, all the inductors will be gone and this 3.2 is below 4.7 and then this 1 meg and the 10,000 kilo ohm is out of the range too so technically all we should get is this 1k this 100k or this 100 and then this 4.7 so let's see what we get there we go there's the 4.7 there's the 100 and there's the 1k now let's say we want to search uh let's go back and look at the entire list and Say we want to search for, um, we're going to enter in another resistor here, just for fun, 41 micro ohms, and we're going to say this is 5% tolerance as well. So we're going to go through and we can look for just resistors now, and we can see all we have here, and let's say we want to search for all of our resistors that have that 5% in them. And there we go, we have the 41 milli ohm and the 100 ohm two resistors here that are both 5% tolerance. And since this miscellaneous and model are completely wildcard based, you can come up with your own unique system for 
tolerances and stuff like that. Maybe I'll actually add tolerance as a completely separate thing because tolerance is quite important for resistors, but I don't want to make this too cluttered. I want to give the user a lot of their own power here, so I think by having this wildcard search, I mean, it, it isn't, you know, it, it basically wraps your input in asterisk. Um, well, it doesn't technically do that, but to someone used to the wildcard method using asterisk, that's what it does, but maybe later I'll add uh, where the user actually inputs their own asterisks and stuff like that, so that way um, they can come up with a little more um, defining searches for what they're looking for. So, once again, we can go through and we can sort um, everything by type. Well, we got to put in some sort of inductor that's one kilo for good measure. Uh, so now we have that wacky inductor up there. So now we can sort by type and now it groups everything and then it subgroups everything by their value, I think. I haven't gone through extensive testing, but I'm pretty sure that's how it should work. Um, it was kind of just a, it happened to work out that way, so I'm assuming that it uses that second category. Um, and then it probably should go on even further and use the model in miscellaneous, but that, that's stuff that I'm just kind of crossing my fingers that it does itself, but I, I'm not going to go through the pain of implementing that myself. So, you know, it's a pretty usable interface and it's pretty convenient, so I'm probably going to make a few test accounts that are read-only that will have my actual collection. So then people can, you know, go through and see what I have. Um, the next thing I want to add in here is so you can enter in how many you have in stock. I'm thinking that I might just want that to go in miscellaneous, though, because... Um, you know, it's pretty hard to enter in. Say you want to enter in a 100 ohm resistor, and you happen to have 5% uh, 100 ohm resistors, 10% 100 ohm resistors, 0.1% 100 ohm resistors, then I'd need a massive, massive analyzer to look through and see, okay, which 100 ohm do you want to add it to, or do you want to add it to a separate category? So I think I'm just going to leave that in miscellaneous, and you can define that yourself. Maybe if this miscellaneous, which is limited to 32 characters, is too little room for you, then I can up that to 128 or something like that. But but I I think it's pretty usable. Um, I'm going to add like a delete and an edit here for these individual categories. But besides that, you know, adding more components to add, you know, I... I can't really think of much more to add, so it's it's pretty usable at this point in time, but um, due to maybe authentication and, you know, how everything's laid out in the file as a database, you know, I might go through and actually delete everyone's accounts, so until I, you know, publicize and say that this website is ready for use, um, you can create your accounts, you can test around, you can try and break things, and then report the bugs, obviously. Um, until then, it's fun to play around with and give me a little um, feedback on what you think about it. But until then, don't actually go in and enter your massive catalogs because they'll probably be deleted pretty shortly here. So, um, yeah, that's really all I wanted to show. Um, log out. Successfully logged out. Now we can... It says you're still logged in, but I didn't want to refresh the page because that's extra bloat for the page. I don't think you should use that extra bandwidth. So now, say someone gets to your computer like this, and like, oh, you're logged in, they click on it, and you're logged out, so it puts you back to login. So, um, I, I think it's a pretty good website, really easy to use, so we can go back into the account. There you go, it's just like any other parametric search that you might see on DigiKey or something like that, so it's pretty neat. So we can search by two in the model, and, oh, oh, we didn't select the type. I, I don't have it default select all the types, I should do that, but there we go. So all the ones with the model with two in it, and you have that inductor and the resistor, so, yeah. That's what I have so far. I'm really excited. I've put in probably 70 hours, not 70 hours, probably 40 hours this weekend. God, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm going kind of crazy because I'm doing this all of my free time. You know, normally I normally have some sort of time to sit down and 
play a video game for a few minutes or something like that. But this week, I've just been completely hooked on this project, and I've just, you know, everything here I've done from scratch, the login, the authentication, the, you know, database file, everything is done from scratch, so, you know, I think, I think it's come a really long way, and I'm, I'm pretty happy to, pr I'm pretty happy to say that I've made this, so, anyways, you can tell me what you think, um, feel free to go to esdb.org, make your own account, put in your own garbage, put in your own real components, but then again, remember, they might be deleted in the future, um, until this database site goes permanent. So, yeah, it's really fun to play around with, and, um, I'll try not to delete any databases for now. I can't think of any reason why I'd need to change it, so if you do maybe really, really need somewhere to put your database, this might happen to be a good place to put it for a few days. Um, I'm also going to add a bulk input and a bulk export sort of deal so you can um, so you can pull your own file and back it up yourself or search it yourself. It's pretty programmer friendly for the interface. So that's what I have so far. Give me some feedback, make your own account, put in your own stuff. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.